That's a sign of a good coder, right? Um, is it not 2,353 lines? It is. No? I, I changed this, so let me do uh, an undo here. It was 2,352 okay. earlier. You were saying 252. I was like, whoa, we lost it. I'm sorry, 2,000. Yeah. So words may be the things that not for me now here on here. Just go with it, okay? <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, any really good talk has got an agenda or a, a plan or a, a format or, or slides. This is not a good talk. So <laughs> here we go. Um, as I pointed out to those of you that were here before that started, um, I've got my GitLab and my GitHub uh, site that I've checked these into. Um, please feel free to go to that uh, now, and, and that way you can give me questions. Otherwise, here we go. Nope, it's not over there. Okay, so yeah, let me, sh let me show it to you. This is what it looks like on GitLab, um, and this is the actual file, the, the, the .bashrc jace, um, and then this is it on Git uh, Hub, if I could click it. Um, the reason I uh, have it on both GitHub and GitLab is because, well, I'm sure you know what happened about a year ago to GitHub, and so I just switched to GitLab for reasons, and so. And actually, you know, I like it a lot. Truck. Huh? Oh, truck. Yeah, truck is, uh, of course, that's my, my handle, my nickname, my online presence. Um, I named my truck, truck. So I adopted truck as my handle. My, name, my truck's name is truck, Chuck Truck, in fact. So, yeah, so that's easy way for me to remember. Okay, so anyway, goofy. Uh, okay, here we are. So this is my Bash RC. Um, again, I have no agenda. If you have questions, something looks really strange on here, just let me know. Um, so I um, learned C programming in uh, 92. So this is very C-like. Um, who in here was born after 1992? Okay, so I've been writing in C before, uh, since you've been born, <laughs> so, since you've been alive. Now who here learned, just for curiosity, who uh, learned C before that time, 92? Oh, wow, fantastic. We do have some old timers in here. All right, so, um, yeah, so I'm a little embarrassed to say, but this is a ridiculously long uh, thing that I've accumulated, as I'm sure anyone in this room has. Um, but, all right, so going back to the C program, the re as a C programmer, um, my style of writing code is very C-like. Um, so in, in this case, I've got um, my, my uh, uh, variables at the top, my, uh, um, my global variables at the top here. Um, so, so, you know, as, as a good C programmer would be. Um, then I've got my functions being defined before I call my main, which is down here at the bottom. And in, in Bash, you don't have to have a main program. It's just, it starts, right? So right here is where all the functions are called. All right, so first thing I do, of course, is, is parse the arguments. Now. Now, normally in a bash RC, um, do I need to explain what a bash RC file is? Anyone in here that not any idea what a, what, I'm, what this is? Uh, honestly, new guys. Yeah. Okay, good. That's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, as I understand it, bash RC is 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 called by, uh, it, it, yeah, so the, the bash profile is, is for a login, uh, SSHing into or logging into a machine for the first time or, or uh, the most recent time. The bash RC is for the next shell inside that. If, it, it, am I correct in that? Is that kind of the right? Thank you. Profile is only once per session, said the gentleman who was over here somewhere. I heard. Phantom voice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so so the difference between the uh, the my, my personal bash RC or your personal bash RC and the global uh, distribution. Um, well, so it, well, I guess it's kind of. 
It seems to me a little obvious, but the one that's uh, put there by the distribution and is in the Etsy directory, or wherever they decide to put it, is, is the one that they assume that is the defaults for everyone, the, the best settings for this distribution or this operating system or, or whatever. Um, and then those are called first, and then your local bash RC. And again, it starts with a dot bash RC. Um, and it's, it's, I think it, it, RC stands e either for resource or run commands. Run com. Run com. Run right. M Multics had a shell called run com, right? And Plan 9 inherited the default shell as RC, the run com, is that right? Something like that? Anyway, something like that. Um, I think now people call it resource file. But anyway, um, and what you do with the bash RC is you put in, in your Etsy bash RC, that's where your, op, your distribution says, we declare that these are what you want. Um, in your local dot bash RC in your home directory, these are when bash starts up, it looks in those, gets the ones from the distribution or the operating system, and then it calls yours. So yours are done last, which in my case, and probably your case, you're going to clobber all the stupid things that the operating system or the distribution did, which you will see here. Um, or add settings to it, or, or that sort of thing. Now, normally in a bash RC, you just put in settings that are for bash, variables that are going to be in your, uh, your bash session, that sort of thing. Um, because I've been using this for years, I went a little overboard with that and did a lot more. And if you look at the, um, uh, let me get to the top of the file here, I've, I've included even a, a shebang bin bash. Now, you don't normally do that for a bash RC. You do that for a bash program. Well, the thing is, I've been using this for so long, um, and I've got special um, thingies um, so that I, this bash RC is actually a, a program too. And when I give it, when I call it with the ink, ink inker um, argument, it'll increment this file name. When I call it with the muck profile, it'll create a make a bash a dot bash. Uh, profile, underscore profile file, and then uh, the bash RC uninstall uninstalls all the files that this file installs. So with this file, I can install it. With this bash RC file, it installs files, but with, if I call this bash RC as a program and give it the uninstall, it will uninstall the files that it installs. Yeah, okay, so everybody... No, I do not. I do not want to say that again. I heard a question, I think. Did I? No? Okay. Maybe I should have this up here. How about that, big guy? Okay. Oh, it went away. Okay, so any questions with anything really strange about why did I do that that way? Uh, yeah. Yes, I've got that further down here. If you want, since since you mentioned that, let's go down to that. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is that? Uh, bash settings. How about that? There we go. So I got um, several years ago when I was showing off uh, Bash, how to program in Bash and use Bash at my uh, Linux users group, um, and you know, saying how I how I love VI and use VI and that sort of thing. And then, uh, I don't know what I was doing, but there was some sort of frustration I was having with the bash command line or something. And I was like, oh, the Emacs bindings, I just can't get ahead. He said, well, why don't you use the VI bindings? And I went, there are VI bindings for bash? So that's my first one right there, set dash o VI. What you can do then on the command line is now bash, um, if you hit a, so it's automatically in insert mode, because that makes sense, right? Uh, you're automatically in insert mode, and you can use your normal, not all of them, but some VI bindings. Use B to go back a, a word, go uh, you know, forward and back, and you know, change word. You know, it, it's, it's actually really cool. And in fact, uh, oh, another one, if you do escape, and then you do V, it launches your command line in VI, so that you can edit your command line, and then when you write quit, that's what gets executed. I do this a lot for lists of things. Like, yeah, I want to do this command on multiple, um, multiple machines. I, I 
so I use salt a lot. Um, so I, I get a, a list from salt of the machines that I want to apply. I clear, clear out the, the name, the proper names of them, put them in a salt command, you know, uh, do join, 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 so it's one long line, and it's a salt command too, and then I hit ZZ, and it's running that command. So I don't, do, do I, should I demonstrate, the, well, I can't, can I demonstrate that? Maybe I can demonstrate that. Let me see. No, I can't demonstrate that, because I don't have salt running. But anyway, yes? Yeah, uh, if I remember correctly, set O is options for bind, uh, bash, sorry, it's, or is it? Uh, it, it is usually uh, Emacs bindings. So if, 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 you're, if you're familiar with using Emacs, then you're, com you're very f comfortable on the bash uh, command line, and you can g go about and do the similar things. Uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, by, like, like I say, by default, it's, it's Emacs E. Um, so yeah. So these are uh, some of my settings: um, check window size, uh, spelling on CD, that sort of thing. Um, I, I'm not going to go through this whole thing because we would be here for several hours. Yes, sir. On a scale of Joe Dirt to Paul Dwarf, how lost are you on a machine that you can't install there? Ah, I have accommodated for that in this because. <laughs> If I go to, um, where am I? Let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so one of the uh, functions I've got in here is, well, let's see. Let me go here. Is uh, detect distro. Uh, okay, and that's there. So I go through here. Um, it's one of the first uh, functions that are called, and it uh, checks for things. Like Etsy Red Hat release. Well, that means it's a Red Hat distro. Well, it's also it might also be CentOS or Oracle. So I, you know, do sorts of things, and uh, you know, Red Hat they they have the uh, clear command at the end of uh, my session, which I hate because I like to see what I used to do. So I I, I called it DC, and, and they also have a RM dash I and a CP dash I and an MV dash I in the bash RC, the Etsy bash RC like you were referring to, which drives me nuts because I don't want to be asked. If I wanted to be asked, I wouldn't be using Linux. I would be using Windows. Are you sure? Yes, no. All right, so uh, by the way, the opinions viewed uh, tonight are not necessarily those of Southeast Linux Fest or anyone any, with any sanity for that matter. So, um, but uh, yeah, so uh, and in fact, uh, so SUSE, I, I installed a new... Uh, Leap 15 the other day, and I found out that uh, the distro wasn't right, so I had to add this SUSE brand. That's new to me um, about how OpenSUSE does things. So that's how I know that uh, that distribute is uh, SUSE. So I go through here. I've got this um, variable called distro in all caps, and I accommodate throughout the rest of the scripts to say, you know, if it's this distro, do this. If it's that distro, do that sort of thing. So does that... No, it does not. It does not answer your question? Like you're trying to work on a machine that doesn't have network access. How lost are you? It doesn't have network access. Right. Right. That's that's true. That's true. So so the first thing that I do is I change my shell. <laughs> um, I I and the next thing that I do if I don't have network access, um, I I guess I sneaker net it to this machine. Um, that doesn't answer your question, I know, but there's, uh, you know, if, if that's my problem, then this is not going to solve that sort of thing, I don't think. I mean, there might be a way to do that. Um, because... But, but it, 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 it,
Yes. And I decided back in the 80s after setting up like a bunch of really custom stuff and then having to sit at another computer yeah. and discovering I was lost being like, fuck, I'm never doing this again. Yeah. I'm only using the yeah. stuff that's available everywhere. Yeah, so you're, so you're using whatever the d distro decided you want to use yeah. as the settings, which is you know, completely valid. Um, but I've got a mechanism inside here to do, to, to SSA every time. So, in fact, let me go to that. Uh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, and I think this, was it Bash that first started doing it? But, uh, so backticks are uh, substitute the output of uh, this command, as you know. And uh, dollar sign paren paren does the same thing. The difference is uh, backticks you can't nest inside of because once you, once you have one backtick, the next backtick is the end of that command. With uh, dollar sign paren paren, you can nest inside that. So, and, and besides, so that is a bashism, I think I'm, I'm proper in saying, but there are other uh, shells that have since, and maybe the bash didn't invent it, but uh, there are a bunch that, that do do that. Is it, is it POSIX? Okay, it's POSIX, okay, so, yes sir. Best practice. Okay, best practice now. Yes, sir. Subshell. Does it not? Okay, it is a subshell. So tick, tick, back tick, back tick is is a subshell. Yeah. So it's it, it it I think it in both cases it forks, does that gives the standard out of that right and puts that in as the yes, sir. To the what? Oh, yes, okay. Set minus E as error setting? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, right. So fail, uh, yes. So in, um, so, so that is kind of uh, depending on what you're going to use the program for. So if you... Um, if you want to handle errors, then never use cell, uh, set dash e. But if you're debugging it and you want to stop at the first time that you, it crashes, I think that's kind of a. So for, from my mind, set dash e is a temporary setting. Um, so set it, you know, while I'm debugging my bash script right now, do a set dash e and then run the, th the thing and then, oh, okay, so well, well, before I do that, I have to do this. And, um, Minus U, I, I don't, I'm afraid I don't know that one. See, again, dereferencing and unrefined, okay. I've, okay. See, again, when I give talks, I learn a lot of stuff. <laughs> so I, th those are other things that I'll, I'll have to look into now. Yes, sir? Another question. Okay. All the time, all the time, all the time. Yes. So this is not this is not the most stable thing, right? But um, what I do then is is all right. So I don't know if you noticed this, but um, it the the name of the file is not dot bash rc. It is dot bash rc dot jace, right? So that I can put it on any machine and not clobber someone else's login. And so if I ever put it in the root slash root and and whoever's running as root, which don't ever do, don't ever do, don't ever do, don't ever do that. But when you do, but when you do <laughs> <laughs> or when you have coworkers that do that, um, uh, so don't change the dot bash rc that's in root, right? Because you're, 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 someone else is going to go, ah! Um, so what I do for my user, I have the dot bash rc dot jace, and then I change my dot bash rc to call that or just symlink to it, um, but whenever I log in as root, I just source this file. So that way I'm not clobbering someone else's whatever. And it's just a temporary thing during the time that I'm using that shell. Yes, sir? As a matter of fact, 
Yeah, so, um, yeah, so if you go right here, the, uh, all right, so uh, we were talking about make prof uh, bash profile. This, this uh, command, but if I call this as though it were a command and, use, and call make profile, then it uh, modifies the dot bash underscore profile. Uh, but you were asking about uh, bash RC, the, the one that's on there already. Right. Um, see, um, I think right now, I do it manually right now, but uh, it could be that I don't. It's too much power. It's too much power. <laughs> um, all right, so, so the, 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 the uh, self-replication aspect of the title that I gave it here is this, um, all right, so... So just so you know, um, I've got throughout this uh, bash RC file, and the reason I call the, the title suitcase is because I have all my other RC files, all my dot files, in this file, which is why it's 2,353 lines long. It has all of my other. It has my vimrc. It has my git. It has my um, uh, xinit. What, what are the others here? Uh, less pipe. It's got also my, my bin directory. It's got SSH config. It's got um, these other strange words that come up with those. My Vim templates. Easter eggs? Easter eggs? Oh, there's tons of Easter eggs. <laughs> there's some. I was looking. I was, I was preparing for this. Well, preparing. I was looking at this uh, just an hour or two ago, and I'm like, golly, I thought I got rid of that. I didn't realize. <laughs> and, and it's like going up here and like, uh, d d let's see. Where, where is it? This function called... Um, uh, see, this is the problem with having so such a large file. But it's one file that I just copy from one place to another. Oh, there it is. Uh, next, next to the top here, start Gobo. Does anyone know what Gobo Linux is? Has anyone ever heard of it? I don't know if it still exists even. But yeah. Gobo Linux, huh? Rings a bell. Yeah, so Gobo Linux was this idea that um, um, you can have a, a distribution of Linux inside of Linux or Mac OS or Windows or something like that. And, and the file structure is very Mac-ish, right? So it's got programs and uh, the word programs instead of slash bin, which why not? And you put all the, the bins in the, all the binaries in that directory. And uh, so anyway, so I've got, um, what made me start talking about that? I, I, I was saying, oh yeah, the, I saw it. I saw it about an hour ago, and I'm like, whoa, that's an Easter egg. Easter egg. Thank you. Yeah, and, and thank you for reminding me. Any time that I go down a rabbit hole and someone wants to bring me back, please be the person that, that sent me down there. <laughs> um, okay, so. For the record, Gobo Linux is still around. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the, their whole team was down in like, some developer conference in the middle of this last month pretending they know what the Linux is. It's really working on software. So, it's a, the cool thing about Gobo Linux is not only can you install it on hardware as a VM, or, or whatever, it's kind of pre-container containers. They, they, you could put it in your home directory, the, the file structure. So you, you saw there where um, it's, it's tilde programs, rootless settings, start gobo is, is the start program. So anyway, it's a, it's a neat idea, and I liked it for a while there. I just haven't had, hadn't picked it up, picked it back up in a couple years. So, um, so any good bash RC, you may have, if you need to change your path, um, you, you'll change the, the path um, uh, variable there, your environment variable. And that's what I do here. And you see, I don't know if you can see this, Novell, Solaris. Yeah, um, these are, when I was on those things, however long ago that was, these were the binary directories that I need to add to my path at the time. Um, so anyway. Um, in uh, a normal bash RC, you have uh, environment variables if you want to change them. Um, that's what I do here, but I, it's kind of uh, distro-based. Um, so I've got my LS options, um, so like Solaris and AIX, and they, they kind of have BSD-style LS, but I still want to have a thing. I don't know what that thing is. I think dash G for BSD is, is GNU-style. Okay, thank you. See, I'm, I'm really glad y'all are all here. Um, I actually say LS coder, I actually define LS coders, but I really stole it from Red Hat, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's their colors. 
Um, uh, and then you got visual and editor. Those are important things. Um, I got it set to VI uh, for my visual. But now, let me, by saying that, any questions, by the way, before I go down this rabbit hole? <laughs> non existing uh, distributions or something? Novell? Novell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yep. So um, I, I've got uh, VI as an alias to Vim for me. You see right there? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it saves. Well, the, right there, I've saved. I've saved 33% of my keystrokes right there. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's why I did. it's kind of. And actually, it's, it, it, for me, it's kind of muscle memory. I've been using the VI for so long, and, and then I went to Vim. Um, but um, can you do that? <laughs> At least it's to the space bar. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so, so I've been using the MM as my shortcut to more. That saves me 50% of my keystrokes. But then less came along. And uh, so now MM stands for less. Then, not obvious, but, you know, that's what I use. Um, so... Yes. <laughs> you would be surprised, though. <laughs> Home automation. I, I should. I, it's 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 just a matter of what I devote my time to. It's not. Do I have time? But um, oh, so what I actually uh, removed uh, last week. The, the 10 lines that I got rid of was, was these salt masters. I've, I've changed uh, jobs, so um, I, I had hard-coded in here the names of the, 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 the DNS names of the host ma uh, the salt masters, so I, I removed that. Um, so that saved me 10 lines. And, and we have a bunch of salt masters, so um, I reduced all those to two now. So, um, okay. Uh, anyone interested in my prompt? It's colors. Well, you, uh, did, did I show it to you? Here it is. There it is. There's my. There it is. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's anyone interested in that. Um, Jace is in uh, orange. That's the host name. That's the time in yellow. Blue shows the last return code. Uh, purple is an optional one. That is the branch in Git that I'm in. And then uh, the blue, the light blue, I guess you'd Cyan. say. Cyan. Thank you, Cyan. Cyan is, is the uh, directory I'm currently in. And uh, uh, red is whether I'm root or not. So you can see it's a dollar sign, so I'm a regular user, not uh, pound where I would be a root user. Hey. Why do, you choose bash over bash? Why do I choose bash over Z shell? You're in the wrong talk. <laughs> Follow up, uh huh. Because Z shell is the new hotness. It's the, it's the new shiny. Yep. Really? So I, I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Yeah. So Z shell is the new hotness. Um, it, it's got a lot of great features. I have not used, and I don't care to. And that's my opinion. And and yes, sir. My top five most useful. He's got two thousand and you asked him for his top five. Top five? Top five. I I I don't know, man. Um 
Top five most useful. Um, I guess probably the commands that I use the most are, are VI, screen, uh, bash. Um, oh, 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 uh, instead of using SSH now, um, uh, instead of using SSH anymore, um, I've got this file that I've called JSONize, right? So take a guess at what JSONize does. Anyone? What does JSONize do? Anyone? Curious? Just based on its name. Exactly. It, it S, not only does it SSH, but it copies this, this bash RC file, puts it over there, makes sure that my environment is set, and it does the thing, and it does, and it puts all the files, runs it once to make sure that it, and then SSHs. <laughs> so, yes, so it's a worm. This is the self-replicating part. This is the self-replicating part. Jason I is, is the self-replicating worm part of it. Um, sir? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so part. So, all right. So to answer, why, why see if I'm using salt? If I'm this is again in the title, it says legacy or or uh, something like that. So this is what I've been using, but I still use it. You know. So again, uh, JSONize is my replacement for SSH. And uh, uh, all right, so. Uh, um, Oh, yeah, well, how would you eyes Jace? Jace eyes? Jace size? Yeah, I guess I could do that. All right, so uh, send me a pull request. Um, <laughs> Jace of Phi. Hey, there we go. I just saved you like 33% of your keystrokes. 33% of my keystrokes have been saved now. <laughs> oh, yeah, so. All right, so now that I'm in JSONize, and it's probably the longest um, function that creates a file, um, I'm going to like discuss how I create files. Um, first of all, I'll start with a comment that has two pound signs, and the reason I do that is uh, in, whenever I rewrite my README, um, I do a grep on caret pound pound, and in my README documentation, I know all the files that I'm altering, right? So just it's it's to help me help me. So. Um, all right, so uh, and, and then it's make JSON eyes, and of course it's called there down at the bottom. Um, so first I check to see if it doesn't exist, if the if the program called bin JSON eyes exists or not. Then I do a here document with the cat. You know, uh, anyone unfamiliar with that? Besides you, anyone? Uh, not okay, so here document. Uh, send it to there, um, and then I use my my standard bash. Um, style, right? Again, going back to my C programmer style. Uh, it, it starts with a bin bash. It, it has good comments. Uh, my, the, the created up here at the top, um, this is substituted in the here document with, um, let me go to the beginning and uh, created. This is, um, this is a string that says created by bash RC, JSRox equals the JSRox variable, which is above there, which is my version number which is the date that I last updated this file. I have since uh, become more attached to semantic versioning. Anyone know what's the, do I need to explain semantic versioning? Okay, good. Um, but this file is, is just used by me, so I just put today's date, and I put it in a sane manner, in other words, Big Indian, so that it can be sorted. Um, year, month, day. Um, then I have the, put that in the, the created uh, variable, which is put at the top of all the files that I alter from this point forward that, that I create. So that I know that whenever I look at this file, what bash rcjs created this file. Yes, sir.
Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, I feel like it's either a setting. Sir, Globstar. Thank you. Globstar. Yep, there it is. Shopped dash s Globstar, but it's got a, it's after version four. Bash four introduced using star star to traverse the tree. A uh, star? Yeah. Or star star. Uh, does anyone know the answer to that question? Yeah, I'm I'm not sure about that, having not used it, so I I can't answer one way or the other. I'm sorry. So okay, you want to try it? All right, fine. Like LS star tab. It's substituted. Well, that's the only, only um, non-hidden file. Oh, okay. Um, except for title. LS star. So interesting. Why did it not uh, do title? Since that's read um, star star and tab. Read me. Maybe that's the is that the first one alphabetically before T capital R before capital T. That must be it. It was the first one, huh? Just does the first file. Okay. L S capital T star tab title and title tilde. Uh, now, see, I, I, that's a setting that I've got, so that um, I hit tab and it just completes. Um, I think, depending on the distribution, is whether it will uh, hit it, uh, co until it completes uniquely and then list it. For me, it's the second time I hit tab, it'll list. Um, so that's one of the settings, and it's in here somewhere, and I don't know where it is off the top of my head. I've got it in my bash RC, so I don't have to remember it. <laughs> so, <laughs> any other questions? Yeah? yeah? Yes? Yes, it is. No. Yeah, it's 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 uh, big and long and um, colorful, and you 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 learn to live with things. <laughs> it's very prideful. Yes, I have pride. Um, what? Do you not have pride? <laughs> so um, yeah, it, it yes, it can be cumbersome and hard to read, but but then I use eighty columns. In all my shells, so you know. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yes, sir. A new line. Yeah, a lot of people do that, and and in in fact, I, I use um, whenever I am ever required to be subjected to Windows, um, I use Sigwin, uh, where they change the prompt so that it's, it's some dis. Description and then a new line and then the actual dollar sign. Dude. Linux subsystem, man. <laughs> you know, if, if, if I'm going to use Linux subsystem, why not just use Linux? If you're going to use Sigma, why not just use Linux? Okay, so, yes, agreed, agreed. So, yeah, so I'd start. The new WSL actually includes a Linux kernel now. In the house new kernel. So, I've, I've uh, you know, tried not to use Windows whenever possible. So. Sir, what? When when the SS? Okay, yeah. Yeah, we don't need Linux because Windows is. So anyway, so I've got this program called JSON Eyes. Uh, going back to that, and what it does um, does some checks, uh, which I actually have in all of my Bash uh, scripts because I've got. Uh, uh, all right, I'll go down that rabbit hole in a second. Um, got a usage, of course. Um, 
parse args sort of thing there. Um, oh, and so the parse args, what I do there is, is, is really is just to pass any SSH flags that I need and pass it to the SSH that I do at the end and not to the other stuff that I do before. Um, what's the real stuff that it's doing? Uh, SSH add, if it's not running, if, if, if I'm, so I'm, I use SSH keys. If uh, SSH add is not running right, currently in that shell, I run it. Um, that's, uh, though, okay, so I check whether I'm using, if the other end uses rsync or SCP. So I, SCP if it doesn't, and rsync if it does. Um, and then um, I probably do other things like, um, yeah, set up the remote, so I, I set the uh, bash rc to be J, bash rc jace, that sort of thing. And then I, there you see at the last is uh, actually do the ssh-p port dash capital Y to the remote. Um, yeah. So uh, going to the, um, the format of this uh, JSONized file, that reminds me that, um, do you have a question? Do I have to see a question over here somewhere? Okay, no. Um, and, and again, so uh, a random way of going about this. So if y'all are getting lost, I apologize, and uh, you want me to go in a certain direction, please. Um, What's that? L <laughs> oh. Um, okay. Are you sure at this point what features are part of your bash RC and what are built into bash without reviewing the code? Um, no. <laughs> no. Because if it's built in and I use it, um, it's going to be incorporated into my bash RC. Are you familiar with Temple OS? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, there's no need to be mean. Um, this right here? That's Vin. Yeah. Ah, okay, well, that's a good question there. Um, let me go up here at the top, um, and you'll see my first comment after the comment of the thing is, is I use a mode line to do folding. And the fold method that I use is using markers. Um, so if you see here uh, uh, version, and then you see brace, 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 and then at the bottom, brace, uh, close, brace, close, brace, close, brace. Easy for me to say. Uh, and then I do a, let's see, what do I do? Z close and a Z open. Uh, Z to because that's a fold, you know. So Z close closes a fold, and Z open opens the fold. Z O Z close. Um, so this is done manually. You can also set um, folding to be done. Um, based on um, the file type. So if it's a C program, if it's a Python, it knows automatically how, what, you, you can fold within, you can have folds within folds, like, a, like other IDEs. Vim is my ID. Um, talking about mode lines, um, uh, for, and, and this is actually going off in the VI, there's a, there's a recent security vulnerability, I don't know if you all know about this, but um, don't do this. Or update your, uh, your, your Vim, which is probably what I'm going to do as soon as... Uh, don't do the mode line? Don't do the mode line because it's a security risk. So uh, there's, there's a, uh, a vulnerability, uh, uh, what do you call it, where it's a prototype or a... Um, CV. What's that? CV. Yeah, it's a CV that, that created a prototype, a... Zero data? Someone figured out a way. Someone figured out a way. But anyway, so... so it's a, it's, a, it's a text file that only has a mode line in it. And what the mode line does is it, is it opens up uh, Netcat to listen in on as your user and then rewrite the file so that it looks like it's just hello world or whatever it is, right? So it rewrites the file in this mode line. So it does all this stuff, including set in the background Netcat. So don't use mode lines or update Vim, which is what I'm going to do tomorrow uh, because... Uh, Demo gremlins dictate that I do not update before doing a demo, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I probably should. Yes, yes. If if it's not doing, yeah, you have to actually open the file in VI. Um, and, and another thing that's that's uh, it's also hidden in that um, 
if you cat the file, you can't see the mode line. You can only see what they got you to see. And that's from uh, bash command line um, uh, ANSI codes or something like that, I think. So it's a. Will your bash RC automatically log into all the servers you put it on and update them? No. But I have salt to do that monthly <laughs> automatically. So I don't, I don't mess with it. Sir? Yes, right, right. Well, actually, my, I do have a salt state that puts this in my username so that I have it so that whenever I SSH it. Oh, so going back to that, I don't put this on everything because I don't necessarily always SSH to everything. I don't necessarily get on the shell of everything. I only, so I use S, JSON eyes to onesie twosie when I S, have to SSH to this guy. So hopefully, I never log into production. But you know, every once in a while, I have to. And then that's when I lay all this junk down on it. So, yes, sir. That's a fantastic, that is a fantastic suggestion. I will actually do that tomorrow to check for VI, uh, otherwise uh, no mode lines, because I think that is one of my set. oh crud, what did I do? Um, that is one of my settings. Um, in my VI file, my VI RC, Vim RC. Yes, sir. If your bash RC does all this, how toned are you if I get older? Let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. But, uh, you know, I, I... Are your keys embedded in this thing? No, no, I do not have keys embedded in this. Okay. No, no, I, 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 I'm trying to be co cognizant of the fact that uh, GitLab and GitHub are fully viewable, and I've published this out so that y'all can see it, and, and anyone else who ever wants to, uh, you know, I, I run the local Linux users group. I, I try to as much as I can. Now, whether I actually do or not, uh, so there's probably there's probably some things in it. But um, you know, we all do everything right, right? We're all sanitizing everything. Yes, sir. Yes. I live in um, it's near Spartanburg, but it's the Upstate Carolina Linux Users Group. We meet in Greenville, South Carolina. Absolutely. You're in the Upstate. Yes. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Salt is Salt Stack. It is a configuration management system. Its, comp its biggest competitors are Ansible, Puppet, Chef. Uh, uh, yeah, Ansible and Salt, and Puppet and Chef. Uh oh. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, I just, my current gig, I'm, I'm doing a contract for a three letter government agency. We just built a provisioning platform that can do automated provisioning via ILO and HP server across the network, slip streaming ISOs all the way, all through Ansible, dude. I mean, it's setting keys, it's setting, yeah, dude, it's yeah. powerful. And uh, that's one of the, the next one that I want to learn, in fact, is Ansible. And um, it's stupid easy, dude. It's yeah. stupid easy to learn. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 to, but if I may redirect this toward me because it's all about me, um, I would suggest uh, learning SaltStack, uh, Ansible, or Puppet or Chef because these are really the way that t m m today to to modernize. The, uh, what's what's HashiCorp's um, um, Terraform. Okay, all right. Okay, so opinions. So, well, you know, we all have navels, we all have opinions, and they both stink. So, um, okay, so, so I guess I don't really know that much about it. Salt. You came to my talk, it is salt. <laughs> but, um, yeah. All right. Yeah. I actually think they would have been better off not getting bought out. I think they would have grown faster. But no pun intended. She was the Linux control of the audience. So. Yeah. 
So, um, MK Mountal, uh, you know, that's probably one of those things that uh, I was doing a thing at a time. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's, um, it's, a, it, it's a way for me to, to do my own, roll my own distribution, and I just, uh, or, or whenever something crashes and I use a boot, um, a boot disk of some sort, then I just, you know, you're going to bind mount dev proc sys and dev points, and I need to update it too. Sir? Yeah. Yeah. And then shroot into it. Yeah, so usually what I'm going to do after, the, yeah, so the next thing that I'm probably going to do is, is run grub after this, after I trude into, uh, and, and, and like you would mentioned, Arch does this. I think almost every distribution does something very similar to this. They, they lay stuff down in a directory, and then you trude into it, and then have it you know, bootstrap itself. Yes, sir? No. Okay. <laughs> Yes, it's a decision. Not the the last part is not necessarily things that I recommend. <laughs> yeah, let me let me let me show that again. Let me uh, yeah, see there encoding style that I don't necessarily recommend. So that's yeah. yes, sir. What this one? This is uh, Bodhi Linux. Yeah, what is Bodhi Linux? Huh? Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. So so Bodhi. Bodhi is, uh, they take Ubuntu and put Enlightenment on top of it. Anyone heard of Enlightenment? Remember that? Yeah, Remember? I've been using Enlightenment since 2003, I think. I, I absolutely love Enlightenment. It's, it's my window manager of choice. Oh, the largest island in Switzerland back up here. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably is the largest. Yes, sir. So uh, when, you, when you use, for example, uh, Pseudo, you're casting the Linux kernel for the Uh, I think I'd, uh, using, I think that depends on the flags that I give sudo. Yeah. Right, sudo-s preserves your current environment, right. sudo-i switches for each of Interactive, so right. You're avoiding preservation of your, your environment. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. So that's, that's a... But so, so for example, in Home Debian, um, it will not, if you, it, it will not by default preserve your home directory, but in Ubuntu, it will by default preserve your home directory. So you run sudo Right. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Okay, okay. Or sudo dash i if you want to have interactive. Sudo dash i is for interactive as though you were logged in. Yeah. I never do sudo bash because that's bad. I, I, uh, okay, uh, never, never is a strong word. I rarely, and I try to avoid using sudo bash, sudo dash i bash, uh, sudo dash i in, in general, um, or, or that sort of thing. But uh, yes, right, yeah, yeah. So you try to do that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. Red Hat Four. Yeah. Yeah, Enlightenment. So yeah, so so my distribution is Bodhi. It's, it uses uh, Enlightenment as the window manager, and I, I love window. I love uh, Enlightenment. Have loved it for years, and this is now at dot twenty dot zero dot twenty. So you know. Uh, oh, yeah. So let me show you alias CP. <laughs> right. Well, I'm not sure I'm saying Bodhi right either, because it's an Indian word and it, it means enlightenment. Um, it, it could be Bodhi, B-O-D-H-I, B 
B-O-D-H-I. Yeah. So it, it, it is. It's, it's an Indian word that means enlightenment. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, so yeah, um, I alias CP to rsync. Because um, <laughs> why not, you know? Um, and I, I alias SCP to rsync also. So everything is S, and that goes back to whether, it, unless it's running netware, in which case I don't want to do that, um, and if I have an rsync command, you know, that's what the R type dash P rsync, you know, whether it's installed on this computer. Yes, yes, with the dash capital P A V. Yes. It, it, yeah, it does it recursively, because that's what the dash A is. Why do I do it? Because I'm um, nuts. I don't know. It's, um, it does it recursively, because which is what I assume anyway I want to do. It's, um, uh, it's fail-proof. It'll pick up where I left off if something happens. Yep. Now, <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to... Yeah, all right, so that's... I've never seen anybody else that's there's a very good reason for that. Yes, and that reason is, if you allow me to say, and I, and I saw it whenever I started writing. It's a C habit. It's, it's a C habit, again. Uh, and, and that's because in C, when you say um, uh, variable equals with single equals um, something, you're assigning that to that. But if you put inside an if statement, um, variable equals something, it will also do that. It'll clobber it. Now, in an if statement, you are usually want to check to see if it is equal to, which is equal, equal, right? So I've gotten into the habit of switching it. It does the same thing, right? So switching it, put the constants on the left side and put the variables on the right side. And, and it, yeah. Oh, it absolutely can go wrong. If you use the wrong operator, then you still get something you're not expecting. It's just the thing you're not expecting is So it's a style that I don't necessarily recommend. <laughs> so, but you'll see it throughout the thing. Constants are on the left because they're L values. They're not L values in C, if you know anything about that. And they're R values. They're, so on, and I put, yeah, I put R values on the left and L values on the right in my be, checks, be clear, tests. I'm not at all saying that you're wrong to do it that way. I'm yeah. just saying you're weird. Yeah, I am weird. <laughs> so I, have to, I have to look at it like this. And I'll, it's about 10. Yes, sir. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 So it's it, it's a it, again it it goes back to why I've been doing things. Not and, uh, and I'm really glad that no one in here has said, "Holy cow, your indentation is massive," because no one has said that. Holy cow, your is oh well, let me explain why that is. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's that goes back to um, yeah that. So that's old school. It's eight, eight spaces are a tab, and that's because the typewriter, when you hit the tab character, ching, it went to the tab stop, which was eight spaces, uh, which three? 